Do you also have some stickers in your junk journal stash? Collected to use them in your junk journal one day and now you have your stickers and you don't know what to do with them and how to use them or perhaps you have used them already as they are and now you think I am tired of just sticking my stickers down. <laughs> so the question is, is it possible to dress stickers up and is it possible to customize them somehow so that you can't see in the end anymore what it originally was but that you have used the sticker material and made something out of it yeah that is just your own and for your very own and unique junk journal that is today's question and today's project welcome to this video this is Luisa Heinzel and I'm really excited to share this idea with you because I think this is just so versatile. You have so many possibilities. And the good thing is, even if you don't have stickers, you can do that with other materials as well. That doesn't have to be a sticker. But, you know, stickers. <laughs> Perhaps you have a similar situation like I have here. But if you don't have, I mean, that you have so much of, of these, um... But even if you don't have stickers, you can also use some other elements. For example, some stamp impressions on just paper. So this is just paper. It's nothing fancy. It's just stamped on here. Uh, what I'm trying to say is um, you don't need the sticker adhesive for this project. You could also alternatively use postage stamps if you have some. Or perhaps you have some labels from somewhere. These are also, no, these don't are, these are normal paper. This is not a sticker, but, you know, you could also use, use stickers like those. Yeah, I'm just trying to um, give you some alternatives. Mm, also some round elements, like, for example, just some cut out circles would work really well. I also have some plain labels. You could also stamp to these or just ink them and use these So for what I want to show you today. And what I also have here are some bits and pieces from an ephemera pack from my shop. This item is called Random Numbers and Phrases. And as you can see, it is what it is named, you know, it's... The name is what it is. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> so, meaning these are all tiny bits and pieces from some vintage documents, letters and so on. And I have um, separated them so that you can then print this out and use the single pieces here for your projects as well. I will link this item down below for you in the description box. But what I'm trying to say, even if you don't have this or something like this, then uh, you could also, for example, take some letters, some postcards or even some um, food packaging or something like that and cut yourself some tiny bits and pieces and then this whole thing would work as well. So what I want to do is I want to first take <clears throat> some of these and as you can see I have some black and white stickers here which I really I mean they are nice for like a special amount of time and after you have used some of these, then you think, what the heck is this? And I don't like to use them anymore because I, yeah, I'm just tired of using them. So I thought, why don't we take these and put them here to the table so that everything is, you know, efficient. <laughs> and as you can see, it gets a little messy today. I also want to use these little guys here. These are... <clears throat> on this uh, transparent sheet so you could peel them off and use them as stickers as well and I want to include these because I like them but the problem here is that um, there are many of the same can you see that these originally have been on a roll and they are repeating you know and I don't like if I have the same stickers um, over and over again in my junk journals. So I'm trying to make something cool out of these as well. So let's place them here so that we have everything here on our table. And then I'm going to take some clear, uh, clear, I'm so sorry, cheap white 
gesso, not clear. The gesso is white, but this is really cheap and that um, makes that it is a little translucent. So it's not completely opaque when you put it on something. If you have a really, you know, high quality, expensive gesso, then please um, either water it down a little bit or just use the thinnest layer you can imagine. I'm going to take my brayer here and now I'm going to brayer this onto the stickers as irregular as possible. I don't want to cover everything up. I want to use the sticker material as a base, meaning if there's, you know, too much so that I would cover everything up, I just take my finger and remove some of the gesso, but I'm mainly trying to get this, you know, brayed on here in an irregular way so that I don't have to use my finger so much. First, I thought it is a good idea to use the finger, you know, uh, it could get more interesting, but to be honest, it's annoying. <laughs> So let's let's try to get some of this on here. And this, of course, makes the sticker now mm, into something different. Uh, you know, this is not the end of this project. But what I'm trying to say is you could, of course, leave these exactly like they are. You could take some, for example... Mm, other colors of acrylic paint or you, you could mix your gesso with with some acrylic paint to get some different colors i want to have these really neutral but please play around and use what you have and what you like or perhaps you're working on a journal and you think oh i need red then do this whole thing in red the goal is to use the yeah I don't want to say the image of the sticker because it turns into a background now, but I'm using, yeah, hmm, what is it? <laughs> what am I doing here? I want to have this background of the sticker so that I can do my own things on it um, and put more things on this later. Mm, and that makes that I already have something like a base for my background. Perhaps that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to explain, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that that's what it is. <laughs> so, oh, oh no, I do that with these from the roller as well. And I really don't care if this gets like, you know, really messy and irregular because later on this will look just great and it's good if you try to do this in a really loose way so that you have different results yeah for example here half of the stickers have no gesso so i can leave this i have the gesso here on other pieces <clears throat> i have gesso all over the whole thing that gives it a variation already so don't uh, freak out if you have an irregular um, result because that is what makes this whole thing even more interesting so when we have that we can take um, a heat tool first and carefully dry this please don't hold your heat tool over these things for too long because you know most of the stickers have this plastic material on the back and it could happen if you heat this up too much that your sticker gets destroyed because the plastic um, where the sticker is on could melt. So I'm doing it really carefully, but I want to save some time. You could also, you know, let these air dry. That would also be possible. And they don't necessarily need to be completely dry. I can see that I have some areas where the gesso is a little thicker, but that is totally fine because now I want to take some stamps. I'm going to use some VersaFine Claire black ink for stamping and I want to stamp over these now. Please have in mind that if you have areas like here, I do it here so that you can see it, where the gesso is still wet, 
have in mind that you check your stamp before you go into your ink pad for another time yeah so make sure that it is clean either clean it with a towel or throw it into some water but make sure that you don't get some of the gesso to your ink pad but the cool thing is that seems like a lot of effort I mean yeah so but look uh, the gesso which was not totally dry made this interesting thing to our stamp and that I think is worth to clean the stamp and to pay attention to you know <laughs> this kind of problem so I'm just going to stamp randomly without thinking here and there you could use basically any stamp you have I like to use some numbers and some you know like postmark stamps and so on because I think <clears throat> that looks really nice and that is also something that I use very often in my journals. I like to stamp with yeah, those kind of tiny things like numbers and so on. But if you like something else, then please just use something else. And what you also could use is, let me first do that because I know that it is amazing and I don't want to stamp too much here. And then later on, I don't have any space anymore. <coughs> oh, excuse me, please. Because you can also take a background stamp. And if you perhaps happen to have these, like, you know, these flower stamps, then prepare to be amazed because, uh, yeah, <laughs> this looks absolutely gorgeous. This background stamp comes from this set, Papillon CMS 106 by Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. And this is really cool when you have like flowers or something because look, let me show you the magic. I wasn't expecting that when I recorded my German video approximately an hour ago, I was like nearly freaking out because that looked so cool. So I'm going to take this, even if the gesso is a little wet, still wet here and there. And I take this, carefully rub over this. And I have the coolest collage fodder ever. You don't see anymore that this was a plant. It looks interesting somehow. You have a background. You have your own thing. Because when you use the ch the stamp of your choice. And like the... In this case, in my case it's white. Because the gesso is white. But if you choose the color of your choice for this first layer. And then the stamp of your choice. And you can also choose another color for stamping of course then you have a really really unique piece and this looks absolutely cool collage fodder in this shape uh you know have you ever thought about that i think when we make collage fodder we often think about like scraps or rectangles or something like that but have you ever thought about collage fodder that looks like that and of course you could leave these exactly like they are now and just put them into your journal. I mean, please imagine, here was a butterfly. Do you want to see how that looks when there's a butterfly? <laughs> I'm so hoping that you like this as well. This is too big. It has to be a butterfly, which is not too big in this case. But imagine you would, you know, dimensionalize him. Is that, is that a word? somehow and then put him here perhaps with a little piece of you know um, a nest of thread or something below some antennas and then this whole thing is done I mean look <laughs> can you please freak out as well I would love to hear you freaking out because yeah <laughs> this is just cool and I made the experience that it looks the best on these yeah, floral stem, uh, sorry, floral stickers here because they have a little bit of like green and red and that stuff. And with the gesso, it gets really muted somehow and background dish. And when you then stamp over that, 
this is just so cool i want to leave these as they are and use them as they are this is just so cool but uh you will see let me put these out of the way and let me show you what happens if you do that with one of these black and white ones so that you can compare that and perhaps you have both of these kinds of stickers then you can decide what you like better eh? come off please this totally reminds me to the ideology collage paper with the difference that this has this crazy shape I mean, you could tear the collage paper into that shape as well. But here you can compare this and decide what you like better. The colorful version or this black and white version. Really, really cool, I think. So let me quickly do this here as well. And I place the sticker on the stamp here instead of the stamp on the sticker. Because then, when I have it like so, I can see through the material here because this is just, you know, some kind of a washi sticker. I can see where I already have the stamping and then I can control how irregular and yeah, distressed I want to have the stamp impression. But you could do it the other way around, of course, as well. Shall we try something like that with this kind of sticker thing as well? But we have a number there. Let's let's take this where nothing else is yet. Oh, this is this is just cool. Look, and now of course, please imagine only one of them. Yeah, and oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, is this is this an L? This is an L. This says Louise. This is really silly because you can't see that so well. I mean, it's confusing when you have the whole thing. Um, please imagine you would have only this thing somewhere in your journal. That is just cool, isn't it? But we can do even more and make this even more interesting because when you take, especially these black and white ones, but as I said, that works with any other Thing as well you could also take colorful pieces of paper or something it doesn't have to be a sticker but take some more stamps Ooh, come on and randomly stamp on here so that it looks nice and it can also be a little like you know busy there's no problem with that because in a second we are going to do something really cool. Let's take this butterfly. By the way, these stamps I'm using here at the moment are from the Field Notes stamp set by Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. The number is CMS 396. I guess I don't have to look that up because I have that <laughs> already <laughs> automatically in my mind because this is one of my favorite stamp sets and if you are new to junk journaling and you ask yourself which stamp set shall I buy for things like this I mean yeah like tiny writing tiny numbers then I would definitely say try to get the field notes stamp set or another one is um, also really cool for something like this that is called eccentric also really nice uh, for things like this mm. let's take this little guy and of course you can do this as full as you want and as busy as you like it but please believe me this is way more confusing now then it will be in a second because uh, this will not stay in this shape I will cut these apart in a second yes you've heard right <laughs> we'll cut them apart even if you of course could use them exactly like they are here now but trust me just trust me and if you are only a tiny little bit like I am, then you will be amazed in a second. That sounds totally arrogant, but 
<laughs> I believe in what I'm saying here. <laughs> so, let's see. This is just wonderful. Let's leave it like that. <clears throat> you could leave this like it is. You could think this already looks somehow like a flower. Please imagine you would have a die cut flower on here. Do I have one here in my area where I could grab it? No, let's see. So I quickly picked one up. So please imagine you would search for a die. Oh my goodness, this is just perfect. But this is, please believe me, this is coincidence. I've just went to my drawer where I store my die cuts. Let me quickly pick a neutral base so that you can see that better. Um, and I just wanted to take like one of these, you know, wildflowers, but I realized that I don't have some, um, you know, cut out in my stash. And then I picked this because I thought that would work as well. And by coincidence, this is exactly the right shape, look. This little thing goes here, this little thing goes there, and it looks like we had cut this sticker thing to the shape for this. But of course we didn't, but can you see? That looks so cool. So of course you could use these exactly like they are. And even if you don't have like the perfect shape, look, this is just cool. Take the butterfly back and Put him here and be happy this looks so cool please tell me that this is cool <laughs> i'm so so happy about that but yeah perhaps you think <laughs> she she's like <laughs> so of course you could um turn these into something like your own without um, changing the shape so here for example <laughs> here for example i can see um a coffee cup with a coffee with cream can you also see that that here's the shape of the cup <laughs> and here is the cream and a little bit of the cream is coming down here so if you would have like a drawing of a coffee cup or you would of course do the drawing with the help of this and then you could stick that on top this is translucent then you would have the coolest design over your coffee cup ever You can also <laughs> take some scissors and now don't think, just cut. Just cut this into pieces. Don't think about it. That is the easiest way. When I recorded my German video, I tried to think where I want to cut and I tried, for example, to cut along the words and so on. But that is in my eyes. I mean, it is possible. Yeah, you could do that, of course, but... I think the better way is to just cut it out and see what you get. Similar to like, you know, a master board or something. I want to leave this as it is, but let's cut this with the background as well so that we can see what we, uh, this background stamp, I mean, so that we can see what we get there. I want to leave this for my die cut. I just love that. And when you have cut that, look at these pieces. This, for example. Isn't this just the perfect piece for, for example, putting, come on, a little label on here and use this for writing down a date in your journal, for example. Or you could even do it the other way around so that you see more of the black and white. You could even do it like this and write something here. You could use this in a collage as collage fodder, as I said already, or whatever you want. You have the most interesting pieces with just two really simple steps. Okay, if you if we um, count the cutting as a third step, then it's three steps. But this is just so easy. And on some of these pieces, you can still see the flowers. 
we had before and that is what I like because then this is not just used up as a material that I have but I have the flowers here so that they are like part of my new thing yeah so I would find it really sad if I would cover up everything and if I couldn't see anything of the original design of the stickers anymore, because then I could also take a normal piece of paper. Yeah. So if I couldn't see anything of that anymore. So these are the ones with the numbers. But even if you have don't have those number stamps and you have a background stamp, for example, that looks really interesting, I think. So this is the one where I use the background stamp from the Papillon set. And the I think the really the best way is to cut without thinking that is uh, I like that so let's now mm, shall we stamp some more things on this on these as well or shall we first make some tiny things out of that hmm. let's see let's start with something this is also something where I think this is really up to you how you do that it's always up to you of course but in this case i think everyone has to find um, yeah his or her own way to do that because i'm really chaotic with these things i think i want to start with the base like this and a second later i could think oh i don't like that anymore i want to do something else so um you know <laughs> there are different things could happen in such a process and i think that is totally normal Mm. Yeah, and it could also be that you don't know what you want to do first and that you have to like play around with different things you have <clears throat> on your desk there. So what I'm trying to do now is I try to find some pieces that I can use as a base, Yeah, meaning some tiny stamp impressions or you could even take some tags which you perhaps uh, have already prepared. I have these little stamp impressions here also from the Field Notes stamp set mm, and I had them in the same drawer like my stickers and I thought why don't I use this here just like it is and as a part of this whole thing. So I'm trying to find some nice arrangements with these elements and here of course you can play around also with some you know, uh, bits and pieces you have. Perhaps you have some other things like stamped numbers or postage stamps. I can't find my postage stamps. I had some here. And now I want to think about how I could include these little pieces into these arrangements here so that we get a really nice here with especially mm, I want to pay attention that I can see these like weird shapes somehow yeah so for example here we get a really nice contrast with the shape of the sticker and here mm -hmm, you can see it's not so so big I mean the contrast is not so big yet but perhaps I don't like that. Sometimes it, ooh, it also helps to take this and put that behind this thing. But it's a corner. It's like, you know, it would have to go like so. No, we have to put it here and we have to find something that we can tuck behind that is like, you know, more contrast. Um, we also have these. could perhaps I don't know if I like this concrete image of this bird here or if I want to go with some more like labelish things but perhaps we could also do a combination mm. Let's perhaps take this little thing. This is also from the printable I've mentioned before from my shop. Uh, 
I'm going to ink this just to get rid of these white edges from the cutting. And we could perhaps... <sighs> I don't like that. Perhaps like this. Something behind. Mm. Somehow I like this. So let's glue that down. And perhaps we can then stamp like a postmark thing on top. Ooh, that is a little bit too much. And if you don't have postage stamps, you could also, of course, use tiny bits of paper. I mean, that doesn't have to be like, you know, postage stamps are somehow fancy. <laughs> but please just use what you have. You could even take some pieces from like food packages or something like that and cut some numbers out. Or perhaps you have food packages with some interesting writing or so or interesting colors all of that of course would work yeah let's take this stamp and just do it like this then the bird is still visible but not so extremely in the foreground i really like that and of course you could jazz this up even more by taking this to your sewing machine for example and sew some areas just for decoration or of course you could sew this to your junk journal page later as well that would also be possible so let's perhaps go on with this little thing think I want to glue this down first but I will glue it only on one side so that I have the possibility to tuck something uh, in here later I will not remove the plastic here I'm just taking some bookbinders glue you could alternatively take some collage medium or gel medium or something like that which could handle gluing plastic on paper of course you could peel off the back of the sticker I mean this plastic thing but I think it's not uh, necessarily important because why? I mean, yeah. <laughs> and mm, if you leave the plastic, the sticker is also more dimensional, of course, because it's not glued down completely here. Compared to if you would uh, take the plastic off. Because then, you know, it sticks, it sticks and it sticks completely. The whole surface would stick. Oh no, my staples are empty um, and the other good thing is this is then translucent but not so translucent it, then if you would stick it down completely and I really like that you have that variation as well or the possibility of, of that variation this is already really nice I think shall we put this stamp over here as well. I think I want to try how that looks. Ooh. Holy moly, stay here. Just like this. I really like this. What do you think? I mean, you could go way further yeah, and distress the edges and so on. I like to have some some of these in my stash so that I then later on when I make a journal can go to my drawer and that I then can choose from what I have prepared there and then I can always 
take um, the ink of my choice and ink the edges. Yeah, that's the reason why I don't do that now in this second. But of course, if you already have a journal in mind where you want to put these in, then ink them. Yeah, if you already know the color you want to use for inking. What about this? And then we could What if we take a piece like this yeah, or even this, can you see? Here the contrast of this interesting edge is way bigger than here. I thought it's nice when we have that here in the corner, but this paper is lighter and here it's, it comes out way better. I really like this here. Perhaps even like this with this little frame on the bottom. Shall we? Oh my goodness, can you see what I see? We have used this stamp here on the sticker a second ago and this what i had in my stash is made with the same sticker uh, sorry with the same stamp i'm totally confused because i just thought how do i have to oh my goodness look oh my goodness how cool is this I haven't even thought, oh my goodness, I haven't even thought about this beef. Why is this so different? 7, 8, 5, 9, 7, 8. I want to line this up so that it is really exactly in the right position. Oh my goodness, please imagine. Holy cow, I have to make another video. Do you, do you know what I'm thinking? Stamp with a stamp <clears throat> to a paper, like the red one here, uh, the red stamp. Then stamp with the same stamp to the edge of a sticker, like for example with flowers or so, and then just stick it on top of each other. And now please imagine we would cut this out here additionally. Then we would have the flower and this cool thing only on the round thing. Holy moly guacamole. I have to make a separate video about that because uh, this is something I have to do like, you know, separately. Otherwise I will con would confuse myself now and you as well. But... Oh, I, to be honest, I haven't expected that something like this could happen in in a, in in, in, uh, in a video like this. <laughs> what is this? I I want to have. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I want to have a little something here. That is too small. That is too green. I need ha ah, ha I need something that is like neutral, but not so big. Because I want to finish that up here with something, perhaps also a number or something like that. Let's try this. And if you want to hear the whole truth, I'm really surprised how this goes here today. Because this is already the third try of making a video for Sunday, you know, for you today it's Sunday. If you watched the video right after I have published it. And I had some really, really unbelievable accidents here on my table, which um, 
made that I had to delete my videos and throw my project projects into the trash can. And if you know me, then you know that that normally won't happen. I I have nearly never thrown something into the trash can, but things went so wrong and I was like, you know, do you know the situation when you think, what the heck shall I do? I can't come up with something that works. You have something in your mind and then you do it and after you have done it, you think, I can't show that to the people because it's just, you know, shit. And I also made some technical mistakes. Yeah, so, you know, I tried some techniques and I did things that were just silly. And that made that I <laughs> had to delete two videos. And this is the third try to get something up for you. And, you know, then it's really cool when something like this happens. And um, even if you think... I don't like that. What is she talking about? And then, you know, I have to think, even if that is hard, but I have to think, okay, I don't care because it's my project and I like it. And if you are not amazed, <laughs> then I can say, okay, it's okay. I have something cool here, even if the people don't like it. <laughs> But that is important, I think, that you have some successful experiences after things that went totally wrong. I find that really um, important. And even if it's, you know, doing the simplest things, that can sometimes really help to get new ideas and even if you make these things and you think where the heck shall I put them I have no idea that yet make them put them into your stash and then later on I'm sure you will find the right place for them once you made something that you like I believe in this phenomenon that you then later on also can find the right place for that in your journal even if you don't know where to put this now but i'm sure if you like it now and if you enjoyed the process then later on the right spot in your journal will automatically come and i also think hmm, in the past I always thought oh, I made some things for my videos and I had some ideas and I made something for my stash and then some of the things have been in my stash for such a long time that I nearly couldn't believe it that I made them you know so long ago but that can also have something positive because when you look at things after a while and you have nearly forgotten them, then you look to them with totally different eyes. And I think that can be really, really helpful. And also, that that can also be a motivation for taking, you know, your things out <clears throat> and do something with the things you have. Especially with stickers, I think. I'm really happy that no one says that you have to peel off this plastic from the back. And I'm really happy that I have some glue that can handle this kind of material. Because it would be just annoying to peel off all of these things. And some of the stickers which are you know, available for not so much money don't stick so well so that is my experience and especially when you have them for a little longer in your stash it could happen that they then lose their stickiness and that is really annoying but with this it's absolutely no problem just take some book binders glue or collage medium or whatever where it says you know that it can glue 
uh, plastic to paper and also with die cuts here I really enjoy that this is so sturdy if I would peel the plastic off then I would probably see the shape of the die cut on my sticker here because it would press into the little cut areas there and then I would probably get the shape of the die cut on my sticker and I don't like that. So that is also an advantage of leaving the plastic behind the sticker. <sighs> this is just cool. Let's make more. I want to have more. What about these little guys? Can we please take a little tag? Because I don't have so many bigger bases left over here. So let's take a tag. I know this is blue and I said I want to have some neutral things on here. But I'm just thinking this looks absolutely fantastic. This combination. So let's see. Can we perhaps take one of the... Oh, that is small. One of these. Oh, we have to make the tag perhaps a little smaller. <laughs> Because I just thought, can we take this yeah, and use that with some of these behind. But then the tag is relatively long, isn't it? But we can perhaps, let's just... No, a combination of this is not possible because here's yellow. I don't like that. Let's uh, later on just cut the tag. So... I thought we could take these. Let's see if they stick well here. That works. Or if we need additional glue. Oh uh, yeah, we need additional glue. Look. <sighs> this wrecks my nerves. I mean, how can you call something a sticker when it doesn't stick? I mean, well, the word sticker doesn't say that it sticks good yeah <laughs> so perhaps that is perhaps that is the solution for all of those questions why stickers sometimes just don't stick because it doesn't say well sticking sticker it just says sticker mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm trying to be funny but it's the reality do you know that you you <laughs> You try to be funny and then you realize that it's just the rea reality you are talking about. And that is, it's, it is just not funny at all. <laughs> because it doesn't stick. <sighs> yeah. So that will dry translucent, of uh, transparent, sorry. Hmm. Okay, so that is good. I wanted to make something that is really matchy-matchy and I think that is happening here right now. <laughs> and why don't we take another material into this by leaving the plastic here? That could also be interesting. I mean, here I have peeled the stickers off and we have them separately. Um, here they are separately somehow as well, but we have the, the plastic here and perhaps, oh, perhaps with that, with this whole sheet, we could make this whole thing work because what if I sew this on, yeah, let me just, I'm back in a second. So here I'm back. Look, I've just sewn along here with a running stitch so that this is still loose so we could use this you know, tuck something behind if we want to add more to this collage. And now I'm thinking about attaching this here, but first only in the middle so that we here also have the possibility to put something behind. I'm a little afraid. That my stays on ink is not totally dry yet. Oh, it's okay. So I'm lining this writing up with the 
you know, with this and the lines on the tag so that it is really straight. So that the eye can't get so confused. And then shall we add more colors and more shapes or shall we stay in this rectangular scheme but I really like this here so let's take some glue and let's stick this here behind oh, that's the tag itself is a little wonky I should put that be below some heavy books when it's finished it's that is from the coffee dyeing but it drives me crazy a little bit eh, don't freak your freak Louisa <laughs> So uh, what else could we add here? Can we, does it make sense to add pieces of this material? Oh yes, look. But here, let's try to peel this off and use this as the real sticker. I know that these stick way better than the green ones that I had before. So this shouldn't be a problem. The only challenge is to get this off here. Because this is somehow like, you know, a washi sticker material. Meaning, when I stick this down here, I should be able to see some of the blue color through it because it's translucent. Yeah, medium well. Because the blue is so light. But it gives another, like, feeling. Because when I go over this here, I can feel it's, you know, like, nearly one with the background. Here I have this texture and it's like different to the other things and I like when you can touch and feel different things on such a tag. Um, this is perhaps a little too much. Then this is even way too much. Searching for a smaller piece. Oh my goodness, my stomach is making really crazy noises. I'm hoping that you can't hear that. <laughs> and if you can hear it, please, hopefully, you are not bothered by that. I just had some vegan schnitzel. Is schnitzel an English word as well? I don't know, with some vegetables and now my stomach is obviously trying to handle that. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's so hard to peel these things off when you have cut them in half or more than, you know, not only in half. You know, we have more. Oh, more pieces than only two but ah, you know I can't get that off I'm freaking out I thought when it's cut and you can go here into this edge then it's easier but it really isn't that's also a reason why I normally don't like to use these stickers as they are I really hate them I don't even know why I bought them to be honest because that is just nerve-wracking but <laughs> you do you. <laughs> so let's bring this to the background here. Let's then. Ooh. Oh, here. Got this. I really like this neutral look. I really haven't expected that. Hm. I mean, I like neutrals, but this is really 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 neutral isn't it but at the same time it has colors hm. that is perfect oh my goodness this is also oh i've destroyed it this is also a stamped image I think I have another one and I thought
or perhaps we can first I thought here it would be a good place but then we would need perhaps a third piece in this color which then goes here so that we have then an odd number of this color and somehow an irregular triangle. Mm, do I have another of these, exactly these? Nope. Oh, yes, here. Perhaps if we take this and cut that in half. Not here and shall we then perhaps also add a butterfly I know <laughs> This is not a butterfly. <laughs> I know, I know. But I just wanted to see what happens if we... Take this and... Uh, these are just some... Uh, you know, you can see what this is uh, meant to put on here. Yeah, so uh, these round, you know, whole reinforcements or how is that called in English? And I have dressed those up with a little bit of glitter and ink. I'm just thinking if I want to include these here. No. No, no. That is somehow too much of this color. First I thought this matches this. But that would be too much. Where are my butterflies? That looks very wonderful, but it is also really big and it covers a lot of the sticker up. Better size, wrong color. Oh. Very small, but what if we take three of this size just like this oh oh i like that i will take this to my sewing machine and just sew through the bodies of the three butterflies here i'm really surprised that i don't have the feeling that this needs splatters I just thought some white splatters and I have the feeling it doesn't need that. Mm, the background is really busy but at the same time so interesting that you don't have the feeling that it is busy and that you are like distracted or something. How do you see that? I really I, I really feel that like so. So that is really cool. I will put this under some heavy books because you look, <laughs> this is really wonky, but um, this can then, you know, when you have some pressure on it, be flattened overnight, then we can be happy about this little guy. We can be happy about this little guy. We can be happy about this little guy. Oh, it could also work like this in this direction. And this is my masterpiece for today. Uh, I know. 
<laughs> if you have skipped to this point of the video, you can't understand that. <laughs> but this is definitely the masterpiece of today because this gave me another idea. And you will definitely see another video about this idea here. I have to think about that and um, perhaps I can find some variations of, of this phenomenon here. Really cool. But I also like these which can go into my um, stash of collage fodder, even if I haven't done something like these little clusters or so with them today. They, they are really, really helpful for the future. And if I need something quick for a background, then I have these at hand. And of course, these little tiny pieces will go into my stash as well, because I can always use them for you know, little accents in a collage or whatever, or if I'm in the mood and want to make more of these little guys, then of course I could do that as well. So I'm really, really hoping that you could find some inspiration with this video. Let me know what you think about this and let me know what you think about the masterpiece. <laughs> See you the next time. Have a very great and creative day. Bye bye.